He could probably do it. Yeah. Uh, how about Congresswoman Debbie Lesko? Congresswoman Debbie Lesko in right in the middle of this speaker fight. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get her opinion on it. Let's get her thoughts and let's get an inside look, shall we? It's coming up next on 550 KFY. Our daughter, Jessie, loves playing detective. Hi, hi, joining me is Congresswoman Debbie Lesko. Congresswoman, thank you for being here. And I have to join in the fray here and ask again, ad nauseum, every Republican getting asked, uh, do we have a vote? Do we have a nominee for a speaker? Can we get this done? Are you voting? What's going on? Unfortunately, we do not have a Speaker of the House yet. Um, we were in conference for several hours today. A lot of members um, just talked, and uh, some of the members that went up said they were not going to vote for Steve Scalise. And so Steve Scalise called together um, people that said they were not going to vote for him and asked them to come to his office so they could discuss it through. I believe there are some members that have what I would consider legitimate uh, concerns about policy, and that's why they're questioning if they should vote for Scalise. But then there are a lot of games going on. Um, there are people that, quite frankly, from the McCarthy group of people that don't want to see Scalise in, uh, and so they're blocking the vote, and they have ulterior motives. I don't know if they really support Jim Jordan or if they're playing some kind of game to try to get somebody totally different, um, but th- that's definitely going on. And then there's some other people that just want a total change and said they're only voting for Jim Jordan. So, uh, you know, yesterday we were in conference for quite some time. Uh, out, out of the vote came 113 uh, votes for Scalise, uh, 99 votes for Jim Jordan. At the time of the conference, um, uh, first Scalise uh, got up and spoke and said, you know, thank you for um, uh, nominating me. And then Jim Jordan got up and he said, um, I would support Steve Scalise if he gets 217 votes, which was not a clear endorsement at that time. However, then it was reported uh, afterward that he went and talked to Scalise and now he is supporting Scalise. And uh, Jim Jordan did say that in conference today that he will be voting for Steve Scalise and has um uh, agreed to nominate uh, Steve Scalise if Steve Scalise wants them to. But we, we are still not at 217 votes, so we are don't know when we're going to the floor. Hmm. And all of the members are kind of waiting around. Um, it will be up to uh, the nominee uh, Scalise to determine when we're going to the floor for a vote. Holy mackerel. Okay. But how can you not like Steve Scalise? I mean, come on. I bet it's Schweikert and it, that the Schweikert and that um, that Biggs guy. I'm telling you. I know. They're troublemakers here in Arizona. I tell you. <laughs> no. Uh, no, well, I know. I like, I like both of them. I like uh, Jim Jordan and I like Steve Scalise. Right. So, quite frankly, I think, you know, the way that it's been for two and a half centuries, ever since, you know, since, since we started this, is whoever wins in conference, that's who the team should get behind and vote for. That's what the Democrats do. Uh, Republicans need to learn to unite as a team because, quite frankly, uh, we're going to lose the next election if Americans think that we can't get our act together. And right now, unfortunately, we are not getting our act together. So I am very frustrated. Um, I want uh, both of those men are good conservatives that care about the future of our nation. And we need people need to get over their personal differences and unite for the sake of our country. Amen. I appreciate that. Congresswoman Debbie Lesko joining us. And, and by the way, Jim Jordan, he's got his job um, in, in his committees and he's doing a great job. I need him there in those hearings. That's where I need him. Scalise, go he do your speaking excellent, thing. Doesn't he? he? Yeah, Jim Jordan does an excellent job of being a judiciary chairman and fighting against government corruption. Yeah. I think he really needs to continue that uh, job, mm-hmm. and uh, he's he's excellent at it. I mean, that's his personality. That's the, he he's really has a skill set for that. Yeah. Um, and so either one of these men, they're very conservative. I'm... 
I'm very concerned that there's some game going on with some of the members who don't want either one of them. And so they're blocking uh, Scalise, and they're, I don't know who they're trying to get in, but there's a lot of devious plays going on over here in Washington, D.C., and it's really unfortunate to see. And what else is unfortunate to see is that uh, apparently there's an entire generation that didn't read any history books or study any piece of war because this war seems to be offending them at great lengths. And, of course, I'm talking about what's going on in Israel right now. It doesn't seem, Congresswoman, to be very hard to connect the dots where you leave an entire military base to al-Qaeda and then you swap the merchant of death arms dealer for a WNBA player, give Iran $6 billion, and then war breaks out. I don't see why people can't see this. It seems very clear to me, yes? Yeah, I mean, as you said, um, President Biden decided to um, unleash or, un, you know, unsanctioned $6 billion in money uh, so that Iran can get it. Uh, and it was ransom money. And then, you know, they claim, Biden and the administration claim, oh, it's only for hum- humanitarian aid. We're going to keep close uh, you know, close <laughs> watch on this money, whereas you had the president from Iran on TV being interviewed saying, we're going to use the money however we want. And that was on September 11th of this year. Oh, and then goodness. less than that, less than a month later, uh, Hamas attacks um, Israel and Hamas is backed by Iran and Hezbollah is backed by Iran. So now there is a clear threat uh, that not only will Hamas be uh, continue to attack uh, Israel, but also Hezbollah from the north. And so then they'll have at least a two-front war. And then if the West Bank, if those Palestinians get involved, then they'll try to attack them from the West Bank of the Jordan River and uh, attack them three fronts so that the Israelis will have to scatter their forces in different fronts. This is a serious threat. We had a briefing in Congress um, yesterday. I think most of it that we got briefed on you already know about in the news. Uh, but this is a very serious threat. I was uh, able to go to Israel uh, first on vacation with my husband years ago with Dennis Prager, who takes uh, American tourists over there, and then again with uh, uh, APEC, which is American Israel um, Education Fund, uh, went over there, and they are surrounded by enemies, and we have to protect them. Yeah. And by a side note, too, I, the first time I met Dennis Prager, I shook his hand. He looked through my soul and said, be well. And I was shook by I have no idea why. It just, I'm just, and he just, that's all he said. And it just, <laughs> like, that was, I have no idea how he did that little Jedi thing, but it was fantastic. And uh, since then, I've been pretty well. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about no, the border. Good. <laughs> Let's talk about the border, Congresswoman Lesko, uh, because uh, obviously it's it's near and dear to our heart because that's us. We're we're that team right there with our southern border, and I I'm I'm so afraid on so many fronts that the Biden administration has done a good job uh, telling most of America, gaslighting most of America by changing the definition of an illegal immigrant. Uh, to say, look, illegal immigration is down. Look at what we've done. We've dropped it without building a wall. And uh, most of America, come voting time, will probably believe that and not realize, no, you just gave them an app and changed their name to asylum seeker or whatever you become. And then those people coming across the border, uh, a lot of Palestinians, by the way, and a lot of Chinese and a lot of our adversaries. Yeah, well, the the facts are and the numbers are that this September there was 260,000 border crossings, and you compare that to just three years ago under President Trump, there were 58,000 border crossings in the month of September. And so it's a huge increase, and as you say, thousands of people are coming across the border from all over the world. Thousands of illegal aliens are coming from what they call countries of interest which countries of interest are ones that promote or protect terrorists or they're a danger to the United States. And those are just the ones that we know of. There's so many that aren't being caught. And then we found out, what was it, about a month ago, that the FBI is looking for 
uh, this man who is connected to ISIS, who has been helping human traffic people into the United States. I mean, come on, everybody with any type of common sense would know that if terrorists like Hamas, like Hezbollah, like Iran are trying to hurt Americans, as they are, they're trying to annihilate us and Israel, that they could just come across the southern border. This is a serious threat. I wish the Biden administration and the Democrats here in Congress would wake up. Yeah, we just have seconds here, Congresswoman Lesko, but if, if you can help me out, are we going to try to impeach Mayorkas, or are we just going to hope for the best in the election? Well, if we get a speaker, I'm ready to impeach Mayorkas, and I'm Good. ready to continue with the impeachment inquiry of our President Biden for not enforcing the border and for lying to the American public and maybe for making millions off of his family business with Hunter Biden. Out of Congresswoman. Yeah, that's right. All right, Congresswoman Debbie Lesko, we always appreciate your time. Uh, please keep us posted on this uh, the speakership uh, craziness and, uh, and definitely your work on the southern border. In any way we can help get the word out, you let us know. All right, thank you.